before starting 9gag, you started two other companies? Not really started, right? One of the mentors said, hey, why are you guys looking at this funny website all the time? We told them, hey, this is actually our website. We have 500k visitors a month at the time. And then he said, why the f That night was the night that actually made things happen. Ray Chan, the co-founder and CEO at 9gag. The biggest memes platform in the world. He is also the co-founder of Memelay, an NFT ecosystem. That leverages the culture of memes and combines it with the power of NFTs. How did you build a meme and attention monster over the last 16 years? Because that's something that people like to do. Memes have been around for a long time. One thing that's important is constant shipping. When we were building 9 it's like, okay, make sure the website's up. Make sure that people share every single day. Make sure that people find satisfaction. What's a project or a team that you particularly love in crypto? I respect a lot of the team. Projects that haven't died. The founders are still working hard. They all have something that we can learn from. What's your ultimate holy grail vision with Memeland? I don't think there's an end. I would love to make Memeland become the company that brings Web3 to the people. I believe that for tech to have mass adoption, you actually have to make it work for the people. You lost a son five years ago. You talk about it very openly. Why? He actually never dies. He actually lives in our memory. The death on earth is not the end. Actually, having an end is a good thing if we can kind of like do our best before it ends. There is another project that is working really hard on bringing Web3 to the people. We have two penguins on the table. You guys partnered with Pudgy Penguins to throw an event at NFT Paris. What do you think of what Luca Nets is building with Pudgy Penguins? It's almost like... um. 75% of you that watch this channel frequently do not subscribe. If you like this show and think it provides value to you in your crypto investing journey, can you please, please, please do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button and leave a comment below. It helps this channel more than you can imagine. The bigger the channel, the bigger the guests and the better the conversation. Thank you. Today's conversation is supported by Jupiter, the most used decentralized exchange in crypto and the largest DEX by volume on Solana. Mantle, a leading Ethereum layer two with more than $2 billion in total value locked and $3 billion in liquid treasury. And Astar Network, a scalable, network connecting people to Web3 through entertainment, blockchain development, and community events. The internet yeah. has taught us that. Right? I think even before crypto, right? when we were running get for like 15, 16 years, right? we already know that okay, people actually don't spend time to watch like videos that is longer than like a, a minute. Right? And then right now, maybe more than like eight seconds and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. And you also, I mean, that again, it's good because there's a lot of FUD, right? On the internet, especially for big people. So it can be really bad for them. But if you understand the whole kind of attention game, you also understand, okay, in a week, everybody will have forgotten and we'll be moving on to the next thing. But but that also explains why a lot of quote unquote influenza, right? They, they always try to be very uh, kind of like provoking. Mm, right? Absolutely. They only talk shit, right? But they actually don't stand their ground. Oh, and whatever is hot. Oh, suddenly, oh, that guy was a crypto influencer. And then because of the war, oh, they become like politics influencer. And then, oh, because of AI, then they become AI like influencer. Right? I think it's, yeah, just pick a, pick a link, right? I think, uh, I think that's, that's, that's why, that's why I see that a lot of uh, influencer. They are kind of like that. Yeah. Most of them actually. Yes. But you're saying pick a lane, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, of course, right? Down the road, uh, I think from, from what I see, a lot of the, Influencer or podcast and stuff, they start, they always started with a niche, mm. right? But in order to grow, you actually somehow you have to expand, mm. right? Whether you expand adjacent, right, uh, to another industry or you have to talk about what's the hottest topic, right? Mm. It's, it's only. Where is the attention right yeah, now? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, people don't really see you. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the challenge for, for, for any media, to be honest. Right? That's why all the TV stations, right? They don't have just one station, right? They actually have a lot of uh, kind of like channels and stuff, right? Yeah, so so I think that's uh, that's the challenge because after you hit, uh, I would say, a sweet spot of what you are doing right now, but almost by definition, there will be churn, right? So that you have to get new users, new listeners, new audience. But the thing is, if they were already interested in what you're talking about, they will already listen to you, right? So mm -hmm. somehow you have to kind of like branch out a little bit, right? And how far you go, I think that's the, that's the question. Yeah. Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think people are like that, that they need to always follow a new trend, right? Because that's something 
that people like to do, right? It's almost like kids, right? When you give them new toys, <laughs> right? They always have the new toys more, right? New shiny things. It's like, <laughs> it's like an animal instinct in a way. Yeah, I, I think that's internet, right? Kind of, or even crypto, right? It's almost like uh, empathize, right? The human instinct. It's almost like go back to the, the animal stage in a way that uh, people just act very, uh, I would say, wild. Right? And I think that's one of the reasons why, okay, all the crypto stuff, all the internet stuff, even like the, all the new entertainment, right? They are kind of like in a short form mm. right? because it's easier to grab the attention. But at the same time, uh, uh, we also see content that people spend a lot of time to, to watch, right? For example, all these like, new and old like Netflix uh, uh, shows and mm. they have, they turn a movie, right? Into like a 20 episodes, like a drama. I think that also works, yeah. So people either spend some time, for a short time on some new trendy stuff or they believe that, okay, maybe it's worth my time, right? To spend like 20 hours on this like uh, drama, this anime, right? But they require, I would say, higher standard of mm. quality, yeah. Ray, what is your mission? Mission. Um, when we started and I get 16 years ago, right, we have a mission called, uh, uh, we want to make the world happier. Yeah. I think today, I would say that that's still the goal, right? Because uh, for Web2, we work on, we're sharing memes. On Web3, we, we build a token called MemeCoin. We have a NFT project called MemeLand. Right? I think it's around that uh, um, theme, right? For me personally, I want to add, can we make the world more meaningful as well? Yeah, I think uh, because when, we, when when I was like 20 something years old, yeah, being happy is very important, right? Right now when I get older right, and I have a son, I actually think about, okay, well, how can I make my life uh, more purposeful, right, with purpose? I think that's something that I want to do. What's your definition of happiness? I mean, happiness is quite easy. And also it's very, um, it depends on each person, right? For me, having a good poop, right, and then we come up, wake up kind of like a right on the white side uh, in the morning, right? Also uh, watching a good Netflix, a uh, good TV show. I think that's happiness for me. Yeah, but I kind of feel like happiness is almost like um, infinite, right? It's like, there's no end to it. Right? It's almost like, oh, when I, when we were kids, uh, we loved like certain ice cream. But if you keep eating it, yeah, you actually don't feel happy that much. Mm. It's like a diminishing uh, marginal return. Right, for happiness, right? Meanwhile, for, for like a purpose, right? The more that you do something, the more that you're onto your mission, actually you feel more satisfied, right? So I think that's the difference between like a, a, a happiness and also meanings, yeah. Who are you? I'm Ray, right? Co-founder and CEO of Nightcat, but we also have a Web3 company called MemeLand, right? We launched three NFTs. We are the biggest NFT uh, ecosystem in Asia. Yeah, we also launched a token, I right? helped launch a token called MemeCoin. Right? right now it's doing okay. Yeah, we are trying to to kind of like, uh, not not onboarding people with Web3, but actually bring uh, Web3 to the people, yeah. Before starting 9Gag, you started two other companies? Not really started, right? But, but um, we kind of like work on a few uh, products, ideas, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I studied law at university, right? But I didn't, I didn't study hard. That's why I didn't become a lawyer. Yeah, and then after graduation, I worked at a TV station for, for a year. Uh, no, I actually first worked at a bank, uh, working at a legal and compliance department for three months, too boring. And then I uh, joined a TV station, right? Other than very pretty colleagues, right? Very boring job, right? And I don't foresee myself, I didn't foresee myself to, to work at the same job for life, 30 years, right? That's why I thought, oh shit, I don't want to do this, right, for life. Yeah, and then uh, I joined an internet company as an online community for book lovers. Yeah, because I love to read, right? And I use that product, right? And then I thought, oh shit, they're hiring. That's why I apply. And they, I find out that they are actually based in Hong Kong. Yeah, so I joined a company. I worked there for like uh, three to four years. Yeah, but uh, two months after I joined it, I thought, hey, my boss was so young. If he could start a company, why couldn't I? That's why I found my younger brother and some friends. And then on the weekend, on our leisure time, we started to build some products. And then now I get it's one of the, one of the products that we built. Yeah. How old were you and how old was your boss? I was like 20, 24. Yeah, my boss was like, was like 28. Yeah, mm. I mean, old and young is like relative, right? Right now I still feel like, okay, 
30 years old is young, right? But when I talk to all these referee founders, right? They're like 20 something years old. Then I was like, fuck, I'm the oldest guy in the room again. <laughs> You're right? the boomer. Yeah, I'm the boomer, right? Of course, there are also older guys right, in the industry, right? And also new, uh, old and young is not the key thing here, right? It's whether you have, you're young at heart, right? But that's only old people say, young at heart, right? Because if you are young, you don't have to say young at heart, yeah. What's an advantage of being a boomer in the crypto industry? Um, I think it's, it's not just a boomer, right? But more like a smart boomer, right? <laughs> I think that's the key. That's yeah, because, <laughs> because when we talk about boomer, it sounds like a bad thing, right? But mm. most of the time, especially right, the older I, I grow, the older I feel like, hey, actually people have different advantages at different life stage, right? When you are young, the cost mm. uh, is very low, right? I mean, opportunity cost, time cost, right? You have a lot of time ahead of you. That's why you're willing to try. Right. Meanwhile, when you get older, you actually get more connections. You actually have more experience. You actually have, uh, I would say, uh, maybe better people skills. Right. So somehow it also helps you to manage your company, manage your team better. Right. Because in the past I was like, fuck them, right? And then just fire them, right? <laughs> and then right now you think, oh, maybe they have their own challenges at home. Maybe we can be uh, more accommodating. Yeah. So I would say that uh, this is this is why I like starting companies. Yeah. Because. Uh, no matter uh, your age, you actually have different advantages. Meanwhile, when you're talking about like sports, right? When you're talking about uh, uh, um, joining a bigger company, right? I think age is most of the time is, is a barrier. Yeah. Meanwhile, when you're starting your own company, own, own stuff, I mean, you can just pick a lane and then pick a category that you have. You feel that you have unfair advantage. Then when you start and then you can continue to, to, to learn and grow, yeah. What's something that you would happily let your younger colleagues handle because you think I'm um, too much of a boomer for that thing? I would say that a lot of the things in crypto right, and Web3 uh, requires a lot of uh, youth to do it. Mm. Right? It's almost impossible right, to follow all the trends, uh, all the trends right? and, uh, and also spend a lot of time on Discord, uh, different discourse and telegram groups and then talk to different people, different projects, right? Because it's almost like there are like hundreds or maybe even thousands new projects launch, right? And in the in the in the hot days of like NFT, right? There are like thousands of NFT projects launching, right? So it's impossible for, for me to keep up with them, especially when you have a family and have a wife, right? And then uh, I have a kid. Yeah, I think that's something uh, uh, that I would say that, oh, maybe the younger teammates, they actually better, uh, I would say better fit yeah, for that position as well. Yeah, I'm not saying that uh, they don't have girlfriends and stuff. Yeah, and I'm not saying that, right? Maybe they don't have, yeah. But I think that's that's one of the thing that they like is, uh, they're like a sponge where they actually are willing to absorb a lot of stuff. Yeah, meanwhile, when we talk to more mature teammates, right, they actually don't have time to, for that, yeah. Mm. So you said you started a few uh, products, right? And 9gag was one of them. Yep. Some people say in entrepreneurship, uh, winners never quit. And some say that actually this is a meme. <laughs> is winner never quit a meme or is it actually a truth? I think it depends on how you define, right? Quit, right? And also defines like winner. I think most of the argument or most of the disagreement, right? Among people, among human beings are, they, they don't even have the same definition when they talk about the same topics, right? So for me, I would say that it's more like a mentality, right? When, when we say that we don't quit, right? But also learning when to exit, right? It's also important, right? Because if that's the case, right? Then everyone will, will only work on the same company, right? But when you look at the, the best founders, the best like uh, creators in the space, they actually keep trying different stuff, mm. but they uh, stick to one idea pretty well, or when they find their niche, they actually uh, give their best, right? And then stick around, right? So I would say that it depends on uh, uh, how we discuss this topic. Yeah, I think as a mentality, I think it's great, right? But most of the time, it, I mean, we all die, right? So, so somehow it's not even like controlled by us anyway, yeah. So in, in the context of entrepreneurship, you would say something like, macro don't quit, micro try and fail and quit, right? The bigger picture you continue, but I, it's okay basically to I, I fail would say, a lot. I would say that winners don't quit, right? When you talk about, okay, this is like, a, as you mentioned, it's like a macro yeah. right, uh, lens where, okay, oh, I love 
uh, solving problems, right? I love creating uh, products, right? I love like kind of like uh, working with people, right? Starting companies, right? Mm. I think on a category level, right? Actually, those guys, even if they shut down their existing company, they don't quit, right? But for an existing product, for an existing feature and company, probably they need to have this kind of like a uh, trial and error all mm. the time, yeah. So winners never quit is not a meme. Yeah, What? I mean, it can be a meme, right? Uh, just like, uh, Just like most of the memes, they didn't start it as a meme, right? They started as a very serious, like family portrait and stuff, right? And then it suddenly become a meme. Can you they, give some examples? Yeah. I mean, there were all these like OG memes, right? For example, like uh, uh, one of the, the meme guys I really like is a uh, hide the pain Haro. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the 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 old man, right? Holding a cup of coffee, looking at the screen of a computer and stuff. And then he, his face looks like kind of like Absolutely. painful. But he still smile, right? That's 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 why the name like Hide the Pink Harrow, right? I I I was lucky enough to to meet him, right? And then um uh, and then we brought him to Hong Kong when we launched our uh, meme coin and stuff, right? And um uh, it's it's really great in the sense that for him it's just one of the many stock photos that he he he, he shot, yeah. But then suddenly someone pick it up and then it become a meme. And also there are also other other uh, photos, right? Like Bad Luck Brian, right? And also Success Kid, uh, I think uh, like Grumpy Cat and stuff. Most of those photos, most of those memes, they didn't start as a meme. They're just one of the many ordinary photos on the internet. But then someone pick it up and then maybe share it onto a forum, onto a onto a, a, a group, group chat and stuff. And then they become a meme. Yeah, I, I, I believe that you didn't choose a meme life, right? The meme life chose you, yeah. <laughs> I'm not too part, right? But but this is this is this is what I feel. Yeah. What makes a meme a great meme? I would say people can resonate with it. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's almost like, hey, I don't have to speak, I don't have to write, I don't have to describe a lot, right? But I share the feeling. Right. But most of the time it's also within a, a insider, inside the group, right? Because mm. I think if I give you uh, that photo, right, you actually don't understand the context, right? But If you're part of that group and then you follow the conversation, right, then you understand the context. For example, if I talk about like um, uh, wet me, right, w, uh, we yeah. are all gonna make it, right? Yeah. People outside crypto, they don't understand what it means, yeah. right? But for people uh, understand it, right, they probably say, you're not gonna make it, right? Because that, that, there's a, there's a meme, right? But at the end of the day, I feel like it's, it's just like part of the language, right? But this time uh, we make it like more visualized. Yeah, because it can be a photo, it can be a video, it can be a GIF, yeah. What made, what made you understand in 2006, seven, eight that memes were going to dominate the internet? I didn't, I didn't know, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's an accident, right? But we actually didn't didn't like the it, it, we we didn't even like the term memes in the beginning because I felt like meme was at the time it's only uh, all this like a uh, image macro uh, macro macro right that kind of stuff it's like a photo and then you put a caption onto it mm -hmm. it's very limiting right that's why we didn't like oh oh that guy is a meme site yeah but after some time we start to feel okay actually maybe meme is becoming more important category, right? That's why, oh, we feel like, okay, maybe this is good. Yeah, uh, that people see that like, not get as a meme site. Yeah, and because at the time when we first started, right, we only want to build a website, a very simple website for people to share uh, uh, funny photos and videos, right? And and those are not memes, right? Even in today's like definition, they're, they're not memes, right? But after some time, people kind of like put a equal mark uh, at memes and funny stuff. Yeah, so for me, Yeah, it's almost like we just try to build a product that uh, solve our own problem. Yeah, because at the time, uh, the only way to, sh the only two ways to share funny photos is either you uh, forward the email, right? You got all this like chain email. Oh, if you don't follow this, uh, forward this, uh, the cat will die, that kind of like email, right? And then another thing is, okay, you have to uh, use like MSN Messenger, like uh, ICQ and stuff like that. Mm. You actually have to upload it every time and then share it with your friends. And at the time what we thought, okay, maybe we can create a simple website for people to upload it so that you can send the link instead of uploading your photos every single time, right? That was the, the original idea of Nike, right? That's still the main function of Nike today, yeah. Hey, when shift happens, family. Time to toast our partner, Divin. They're taking luxury wine to the blockchain with their super fun concept called Uncork to Earn. Buy your favorite wines, enjoy unique experiences, and get an airdrop each time you open a bottle with your friends. 
Cheers to Divin for bringing transparency, authenticity, and exclusivity to the fine wines industry. You said before, you don't choose the meme life, the meme life <laughs> chooses you. Yeah. Would you say it's the same with Nine Gag? Yes. Or you actually said, oh, now we need to really focus on memes instead of like funny pictures and photos? It's, it's almost like um, you didn't know you're on. You, it's almost like you, are, you didn't know that you, you have that destiny. It's almost kind of feel that way, right? Because even when we started Night Gag, we thought, okay, this is a pretty shitty product, right? So simple, <laughs> so stupid, right? I don't think this will ever make money, right? That's why for us, uh, Night Gag, when we first started it, it was just like a very simple product to solve our own problem, right? We didn't even see this as a business, mm. yeah. And then we, uh, in 2011, right, we joined a US accelerator called 500 Startups, Right. And then at the time, uh, we were building a product uh, uh, to well, for people to share photos easily. Uh, uh, that was like a year after like Instagram was launched, right? I think, um, and then we thought like, okay, shit, oh, Instagram, they add filter to, to photo. I mean, back then, right? Not like this uh, right now. And then I thought, okay, this is our very, very simple idea, right? And people like it. Yeah, but one of the ideas that people haven't uh, solved right now is, hey, when we are at an event, Right. We took photos of each other, right? Yeah, and how come there's no app to easily gather all the photos, right? Just based on uh, 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 your location, right? And also your friendship, your, your network and stuff. How can we create something to aggregate all these photos together, mm. right? We actually have that idea, right? And then no one really use it. We use that to apply for like Y Combinator. We, no one really use it. <laughs> and then we join 500 stops with that uh, idea. Right. And then, but after some time we thought, okay, maybe this doesn't work, right? Then we try to build some online karaoke right, idea because the karaoke experience in Hong Kong and Japan is pretty good. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the US, it's very shitty, right? You have mm. to go out to sing and people don't really want to listen to you and stuff. Yeah. So we thought, oh, maybe we can create an online version, right? Because at the time there were a lot of uh, lyrics videos already, right? So so that was the two ideas that we built uh, before I get. Yeah, but Nike was the one keeps uh, getting more and more traffic. Yeah, and all these like new ideas, people don't really use it. Then one of the, the mentors uh, we met at Fabian Subs, he said, hey, why are you guys looking at this funny website all the time? And then we told them, hey, this is actually our website. And then he asked us about the, uh, the metrics and stuff. And then we told him, oh, we have like 500K visitors uh, uh, per month at the time. And then he said, why the fuck you, you work on all these like, products that no one uses, right? Why don't you just focus on this website that actually has traffic? And that was the pivotal moment for us and then to focus on IGET. That's why sometimes it's almost like, okay, you already found a dream, dream girl, dream guy of your life, but you didn't know. You don't see yeah, it. Yeah, you don't see it, right? But after a few <laughs> years, right? Maybe 10 years and stuff, you find, oh shit, we actually met in high school, right? Something like that. I think it's kind of like all this like K-drama plot, right? If someone ever make a movie about Nigat, right? Did that night was the night that actually makes things happen. Yeah. So why, what did you do afterwards? When you said, oh man, we've been trying, I mean, you actually got into Y Combinator. Yeah through another product that you were trying to build, right? You no, no, said no, we actually get into YC, we applied for YC like uh, two times, three times, mm. right? We all got rejected, right? And then um, uh, after uh, we joined Fabulous Stops and then we focus on NIGAT, uh, we raise a seat round for NIGAT, mm. yeah? And then after that, right? Because we already met some of the YC guys, right? And then uh, uh, there was a time that, oh, we want to bring the, our whole team uh, to Silicon Valley to experience the culture and stuff. And then I email like um, uh, Sam, uh, uh, Sam Altman, right? Mm. Uh, right now, people yeah. know him as the open AI guy, yeah. right? <laughs> but before that, he was at YC. Yeah, and then we email him, hey, Sam, oh, uh, do you have time for coffee, right? We want to share with you what we've built, right? And then he said, hey, Ray, why don't you join YC? Right? So then we kind of like skip the application process. And then we join YC under some special terms and stuff, right? But uh, at that, at that, that was like, oh, we didn't apply for it, right? But then we got into YC and in the same batch, there are actually a lot of like great companies, right? Coinbase is actually one of our batch mates, right? No one- Same year. Same same batch, exactly the same class. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was like, I mean, if I got closer to like Brian, Brian Armstrong at the time, I probably would started working on crypto stuff earlier, right? Mm. By the time I was like, hey, I don't understand why that guy is asking people to get some user token called Bitcoin, right? What's the point <laughs> if you give, give me some digital numbers and stuff, right? 
I mean, yeah. If if I if I started right to mm. to to learn more about crypto at the time, then probably yeah, I'm not working on like meme coin and night get and stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean again. Uh, uh, you have to uh, kind of like expose yourself uh, 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 to to smart people, right? Smart circle and stuff. Then you get absorb. Uh, you have more chance to to get into good ideas and meet, meet good people. Yeah. So I feel like um, that's why I think a lot of the time you didn't really choose your life, right? Mm. But more like uh, your life uh, has chose you, uh, or at least I like, give you some opportunity, right? But you still have to uh, grab it. Yeah. So thanks God you didn't uh, get closer to Brian at that time. Otherwise, 200 million people would be less happy every day. Yeah, maybe we continue <laughs> to to work on iGet and stuff, right? And then we do some, uh, uh, I don't know, fun fun get coin or fun coin right, at the time, right? Or or at least I can turn my kind of like personal saving, right? Just DCA into like Bitcoin, <laughs> right? That I don't have to work for work, yeah. I hear more and more people say, Attention is the most scarce resource. Mm -hmm. Why? Because time is the scarce, the most scarce resource of human being, right? And and no matter how rich or poor, or in crypto terms we call it pre-rich, right? You are, <laughs> right? You actually only have like twenty four hours, right? So and also the so called the richer you are, right? The opportunity cost is actually higher, right? For you, right? So if you can get. Yeah, uh, someone's attention is right? actually worth the the value, right? Because you can always uh, make more money, right? Especially when when the government is printing more money, right? You can always make more money, right? And you can always buy more stuff, right? But your time is always getting uh, uh, less and less, right? And not to mention you or we, we don't even know when we when the clock stops, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, why human beings are so entitled to feel like, hey, Kevin. Let's make a, an appointment like two weeks later, right? When you come to Hong Kong and then we can do this podcast, right? Why are you, why are we so entitled to feel like, okay, this will happen, right? Because no one really knows whether we die, right? Right after this podcast and then I go out on the street and then I got hit by a car, right? We don't even know, right? And most of the time, there are always stories that, okay, some guys actually die in sleep, right? And it's like a relatively peaceful death, right? So, so I, I think about that a lot, right? Yeah, and, and, and I'm not thinking about it in a pessimistic way, but more like in a positive way that, okay, we actually have to treasure our time, right? And treasure the time uh, with our family, with our loved ones, yeah. Do you believe in destiny? I, I'm a Christian, right? I believe in in the Christian definition of destiny, right? I mean, if we do our job, right? If we do our best, right? We we have a chance, right, to go to heaven, right? And um and and I think it's not because of what we do, right? But because we are willing to believe, right? And I think that's something that I I believe in. Yeah, I'm I'm a pretty new Christian, right? I'm I've been Christian for like. I don't know, like five years, right? Since uh, since since my first son like passed away, right? And then um, but ever since then, I'm uh, I would say that I'm uh, I'm a believer. Yeah. You lost a son five years ago. Yep. Yeah, you that's our first son. Yeah. You talk about it very openly. Yes. Yeah. Why? I mean, why? Oh, uh, there are a few reasons, right? Number one, we all die, right? Every guy on earth, they have some relatives that die, right? Otherwise, it's just impossible, right? And even uh, for all the people right now, we all die again, right? And if we have our kids, they all die, right? Whether we die before them or they die before us, right? That's why I feel like death is not the most uh, a scary thing, right? And I think people don't talk about it enough. That's why we we kind of like, um, uh, I mean, on one hand, we get scared, uh, get scared by it. On the other hand, it also give us a wrong uh, view towards it, right? Actually, having an end is is a good thing, right? If we if we can kind of like do our best, right? Before it ends, yeah. I think that's that's how I think. That's number one. Number two is uh, because I'm a Christian, right? I mean, the death on on Earth right now is not the the end, right? To me, right? And and I think that's also one of the reason I want to talk about it because it's really hard to oh, oh, do you believe in Jesus, right? I mean, it's really really hard, right? But when you face death, right, or the death of your loved ones, right? It's quite natural so that you can talk about your faith, right? And that's how, that's basically what I think uh, the responsibility of a Christian, right? And then the, the other thing is um, when we always talk about our, our first son, his name is called Ian, right? I-A-N, Ian, yeah. 
he actually never dies, right? He actually lives in our memories, right? And I think that's that's why I, I don't mind talking about it, right? And I know that uh, most people online, especially on social media, social media, right? They always uh, show their best side, right? That's why on Instagram, right? You always, oh shit, that guy's traveling again, right? And then took all these like great photos. But deep down, right, you know that shit, how much, tries that they have to uh, do, right? To, to take that good shot right? and then how much edit they have to do, right? People always put on the the, the glamorous, like like, like surface, right? The, the face, right? But deep down, I know that we must share some some pain and it's easier to connect with people when you share the, the similar type of pain. Right? Whenever I, I share my story, uh, um, actually uh, a lot of friends that I met, they on one hand, they, they they always say sorry for me, right? But on the other, but that's not what I really want to hear, right? Mm. But they also share oh their their story of losing a sibling, uh, the story of losing their parents, right? Of course, it's not the same, right? Um, but you feel like you get connected instantly, right? Because when we are willing to open our heart, that's how we can make I would say uh, true friends. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Being vulnerable is the best way, like a weapon basically for socialization, like so socializing and everyone deep down wants that. But most people, for some reason, they're not able to do it. They just keep like a great face, as yeah. you say, right? Yeah. 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 And, and this, there, there was a recent uh, interview that I, I saw, I, I watched, right? By uh, uh, NVIDIA uh, CEO. Uh, mm. And then, what's his name? Jen, Jensen, right? Mm. And then he mentioned that greatness, right? It doesn't come from abilities. Right? He mentioned that greatness comes from uh, character and character comes from suffering, right? And I feel like, oh shit, this is deep, mm. right? And why I don't really see all these like challenges at work really that big is probably because, I mean, you lost your son, right? I mean, losing some money, right? Having some failure at work, it doesn't mean shit to me, right? I'm not saying that I don't care. I'm just saying that I don't care too much, right? Because I understand that, okay, this is not really that important, right? If, because we can still try again, right? No matter, or oh, oh, whether you lose some money, right? You, you launch a failed product, mm -hmm. you can still try again. Right? Meanwhile, when we are talking about our life, you cannot try again, right? So when we kind of like have that, when I uh, have that perspective, right? To me, all things, or most of the challenges, right? In life, uh, I can kind of try to zoom out, Right? And then have a more, I would say, uh, uh, relaxing approach to, uh, towards all these like, challenges. Right? Of course, we still do our best, but, but we know that, okay, uh, uh, not everything is controlled by us. Yeah, I, uh, uh, we, we had a, a project uh, a long time ago called Startup Quotes, uh, Startup and then Quotes, Q-U-O-T-E. Uh, I, uh, because, because I read a lot of uh, red, yeah, a lot of like TechCrunch, Marchable, we very rap uh, when we first started our company. And I was like, oh, all these like smart founders, they have all these like great uh, quotation, right? How come we still quoting like Winston Churchill today? How come we can't quote some guys really smart like uh, and, and still alive, right? And then we create a website to post all these like quotations, quotes of these uh, founders and stuff. One of the quotes that are from the, 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 the Uber uh, founder, uh, Travis, right? He said, that, oh, there's, there's no problem. I, I, I mean, I don't remember exactly, right? But what he, the paraphrasing it is, um, there's no uh, problem uh, that can't be solved, right? You just haven't found a solution. And then I was like, oh, shit, this is like great. But after after seeing uh, uh, the, the passing of my son and then seeing all these like uh, uh, sick kids at the hospital, right? I was like, no, they're actually death, right? It's still not yet solved, right? And also, like um, uh, a lot of diseases, there is no solution. It's not like how much you work hard, right? I mean, look mm. at Steve Jobs, right? He's one of the smartest founders ever live, right? Mm. He still die, right? Mm. At a pretty young age, right? Considering mm. the, the, the life expectancy of people right now. And then look at all these like, famous people like Rockefeller and stuff, right? They all pass away, right? So, so I would say that, hey, maybe death is the ultimate right, uh, destination where to remind us uh, 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 that, okay, there's an end. Right? I mean, Stoic also said that a oh, memento mori. I think it's, it's kind of, remember that we all die, right? That's actually very, very important for us to remember that. Yeah, so that it humbles us. It also makes us appreciate what we have today. Yeah. What's your message to everyone who is having a very rough time today, whether in their personal life or in their business? I mean, 
it all shall pass, right? That's that's mm. my message, right? No one ever on your deathbed care about your crypto portfolio, right? No one, no one, right? I mean, maybe they care about the seed phrase, right? <laughs> so that you can share it with your friends and family, right? Because probably your wife uh, or your girlfriend say, or your family don't understand how to uh, operate a crypto wallet, right? That's why you shit, oh, oh, remember this number, and then, but they, they don't understand what that number means, and right? then they just fold the paper away, right? So, so, so I would say that, uh, I mean, it's important, but it's not that important, right? And when we try to zoom out, right, we understand that this all shall pass. Yeah, and uh, for example, in Hong Kong, there were like two public exams. Uh, right now, that is one. It's like very, very important right, for students to get a good result mm. because they use that to decide whether uh, you go to a good schools, right? I mean, a lot of students were stressed out, right, during that uh, exam. But after you you pass the exam or or whatever, right? Maybe you didn't pass, right? But then you go to work as a society, right? After ten years, right? After a few years, no one really ever asked your exam result, right? Then when you look back, oh shit, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. Oh, maybe I could do better, yeah. but it's not the end of the world. I think remember that this is not the end of the world. It's very very important, right? Because every time we feel like we get corner, it's because we feel like okay, there's no no way to exit, right? Mm -hmm. But there's always a way to exit, right? Just go to sleep. Another day is a new beginning, right? I think, uh, assuming that we don't die, right? Then I think that that's, that's a positive message I want to share because no matter how hard we face at our work, it's not life or death, right? When you really see life or death situation, you will appreciate every ordinary days that we have. Right. There was a saying that I really like was, it's about poop, right? So it sounds a little bit disgusting. It's uh, on a normal day, you don't appreciate it that much, right? But if you have a diarrhea, mm. then you think that a normal day is great, mm. right? So I think have my, the death of my son is actually the really, really painful diarrhea that I had, right? So that when you face that shit, then all these challenges, uh, challenges in, in, in life, it doesn't matter too much, yeah. So when you have a diarrhea, you feel really uh -huh. bad, right? Yes, 100%. And then, you, and then you feel better and you say, oh, it's amazing. Or for example, you block your back and then every time you sneeze or you walk or you, you move, it's really painful, right? Maybe for a few days afterwards, you'll feel like once you get better, oh man, life is amazing. But we all have this tendency to kind of forget. Yeah, 100%. How do we not forget? I mean, most of the pain, uh, we actually don't forget. Right. I mean, for example, losing a loved one, you don't forget, right? And and if you forget, that means that it's not really that painful, mm. right? So, I mean, it sounds like tautology, right? But but it's actually the truth, right? I mean, for example, I, I can talk about my son openly without crying, right? Of course, at the first few years, right? I actually cry every time I talk about him. Right? It doesn't mean that I, I don't believe in, in Christ. I don't believe in like a, a, a afterlife, right? But, but it, it just means that you still feel the pain, mm. right? Yeah, but time can heal a little bit, right? But you still see the scar, right? And you still feel, and if you touch it, uh, the scar, you actually can feel it uh, uh, very vividly, right? And at the same time, I also feel that, hey, uh, if, I mean, human beings are stupid, right? So they try to, they will redo the same mistake again and again, right? But I think if that is really, really painful, you actually won't do it ever mm. again, mm. right? When you talk to a, a patient, right, who got burned, right, probably they will not ever play with fire, right? But for for people who got drained on crypto and they got drained again, it's because that drain on one hand is painful, but on the other hand, it's not really that painful, right? And maybe most of the time it's because they're greedy and stuff, right? Mm. Maybe over greedy, right? I mean, yeah, that's 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 how I see it. Yeah, but uh, I would say that um, the, the most important thing is uh, I can't help you to solve your pain, Right? But I can tell you that uh, 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 we can walk together. Right? I think that's the most important thing of being a believer is we can't help each other right? to, 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 to bring the, 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 the dead like loved one back to life. Right? I'm not Jesus, right? but I had that pain. I can share that with you. You can share your pain with me. And, and if I can kind of like live a, a good, still live a happy life after that uh, uh, trauma, Right, then you can too. Right? I think that is a very strong message right? uh, that I got uh, from my from my brothers and sister uh, with Christ. Yeah, and um, I think that's also quite important because that makes me uh, understand how 
how how small we are, mm. right? Yeah, and and honestly, all these are okay, DeFi protocol, all these are crypto, blah, 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 Bitcoin, white paper. I mean, very, very smart in a way, but does it save life, right? I mean, maybe it changes people's financial situation, but does it save life, right? When you're at the hospital, no matter how, how many Bitcoins you have, if you are sick with a rare disease, right? You don't want, I mean, you want a rare NFT, right? You don't want a rare disease, right? And then, and then you will feel like shit. Actually, doctors and nurses, they're doing an amazing job, right? Scientific breakthrough is actually saving a lot of life, right? I mean, that's why a lot of people who, who, who got rich in crypto, right? They focus a lot of longevity. Longevity is yeah. the big thing, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, is it really that good to live that long? I don't know. Right. I think living healthily, I think that's important, right? Yeah, but living that long, I don't know whether that's really that good. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's another topic. Yeah. <laughs> you wrote when we started Nine Gag in 2008, we were nobody and we knew nothing. We joined 500 startups in 2011, raised seed funding, joined Y Combinator in 2012, and never stopped shipping. A decade later, we're still nobody, but Nine Gag has a global audience of 200 million people across different platforms. How did you build a meme and attention monster over the last 16 years? I would say that uh, just don't stop, right? Because I think I think for content uh, or media, right? One thing that's important is like constant shipping, right? Because, or at least I find your, find, find, find the cadence, right? And then you, you, you keep to it. I mean, when we were building NiGet, right? I mean, we, of course we are still building NiGet, right? It's like, okay, make sure the website is up, right? Make sure that the like new content, right? That people share every single day. Right? Make sure that people find satisfaction, right? Uh, on, on the platform, right? I mean, by doing this simple thing every single day, it actually accumulates, right? And I think um, that's the important part that a lot of people, they, they don't really understand, right? Because the media always talk about overnight success, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that guy, Dude. oh, Trey, like a uh, uh, whiff, and then got like a uh, three thirty thousand percent, like a uh, uh, like a uh, profit, right? I mean, oh, that guy, right? He started Airbnb, right? He's an overnight success, right? They started Uber, overnight success, right? The, the classic 10 year overnight success, yeah, exactly, right? It's like <laughs> it takes like 10 years or maybe like five years, right? Yeah. I think. People don't look at the, the the blood and tears, right? They only look at the, the joy, right? But but I would say that um, uh, being a founder, right, for over a decade, right, not really successful one, right? But at least we we make a living, right? Then this is the part that we understand is uh, hustle is a uh, is a necessary condition, right? Of course, you still need a lot of like other 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 I would say factors, right, to be quote unquote successful, right? But uh, 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 you need to put in the work, right? Most of the time, uh, uh, you don't even have the chance to to compete with ideas, to compete with like uh, intelligence, right? Because you don't even put in the hard work. Yeah, and I think for for startup, for building companies, I think hard work is almost like a prerequisite, right? In order to make it work, yeah. You mentioned going to uh, Y Combinator in 2012 with uh, Brian Armstrong from Coinbase, right? But you said, oh man, if only I kind of like at least put some saving <laughs> in Bitcoin. What's your crypto aha moment? My crypto aha moment was, um, I think around like three years ago, right? Mm. And then um, I actually got into crypto very, very late. So right? I mean, people talk, keep talking about us, uh, talking to us about, oh, launching a token, right? Uh, ever since like um, 2018, right? around that time, I mean, Dogecoin was already very, very big, right? I actually talked to one of the, the co-founders of Dodge, right? At the time when we asked, tried to understand more uh, 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 about like crypto, right? Because it's quite easy for us to talk to people because people know Nigat most of the time. Mm. And then maybe when they spend enough time on the internet, right? Most of the time they, they stumble upon Nigat as well. Right? So it helped us to talk to quote unquote important people, right? Uh, so that we can learn faster than, than other random guys, right? And then, but, I think at the time he was like very, very pessimistic about crypto. Uh, and, and that's also one of the reasons why Dogecoin, right? Actually, the, the original founders, they are not working on, on, on Dogecoin anymore, right? But I think this is also part of the things that makes it great, mm. right? But but then, but we, we thought, oh, I tried to use MetaMask. 
it's fucking difficult to use it, <laughs> right? And then uh, there, there was like test net and stuff. I don't understand anything about that at all, right? And then, um, and I think a time flies. I, I mean, yeah. And then uh, uh, I think like three years ago, there was like a social movement in Hong Kong. And then there is also like the, the China, uh, US trade war, right? When uh, uh, President Trump was, was still the president, right? And then I thought, okay, it is quite risky. Right, for us to only keep our asset uh, uh, in, in a Hong Kong bank account. Right? Maybe we should uh, try to diversify a little bit. Right? Maybe we start a, a bank account in Singapore, in UK, right? and mm. for the company, also for, for my personal, uh, personal use. Right? And then I tried to apply for a bank account in UK, and it took me six months, right? and they still haven't approved it. Right? <laughs> And then, and then I was like, and then I talked to my friend and said, hey, Ray, why don't you create uh, a crypto wallet, right? Yeah, where you try to put some of your, your personal asset on chain. Right? And then I try it, right? As you remember at the time, like Ethereum was like $200. And that was like three years ago. Yeah. Mm. No, more, yeah, three to four years ago. Probably 2020, yeah. Yeah, 2020, around that time. Yep. Uh, uh, $200. Right? And then I was like, oh, this is so expensive. Right, I, I, I witnessed the growth where Ethereum uh, from 200 bucks uh, to 400 bucks in a, a few weeks or something yeah. around that time. Yeah, and then I, and then I saw, right? there was, oh shit, uh, this is a good profit, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, if only I knew, right? But, but anyway, yeah, uh, the aha moment is not the profit, right? Because I mean, I understand the basic like finance and stuff, right? Because I uh, I mentioned that I work at a TV station, right? But that TV station is actually, uh, it's called now PNC in the past. It's basically um, a CNBC, kind of like a TV station. It's like a financial news uh, ter- ter- uh, uh, station. So I kind of know the basic about stock market and stuff like that. And then, I mean, it makes money, right? But it doesn't make me feel like, okay, this is the thing. Right, but only when I started to kind of like send fun to my friends, right, uh, uh, stable coin and also crypto, right? I mean, it only takes like seconds, maybe like a minute, right, to mm. receive it. Mm. Meanwhile, when we are doing like wire transfer at a traditional bank account, right, it takes like days, right? And fucking banks, they also rest <laughs> on like weekends, right? So if you send fun on, on Friday, right, you cannot receive it until like Monday. Mm. And that was like, why, right? I mean, internet. <laughs> doesn't stop why the bank wire transfer has to stop. It just doesn't make sense right, to me. Meanwhile, for crypto, it's so fast. Right? Of course, uh, whether people believe in the decentralization, stability, blah, 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 and then the gas fee and stuff like that. Right? I mean, where's the gas test go and stuff like that, right? But 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 the thing is, I that was a aha moment for me is, shit, this tech is actually amazing, right? And, and I didn't believe in NFT right, at that time because I was like, okay, crypto, it's cool, but I don't understand why this picture is worth like millions of dollars, right? Mm. So again, I'm a boomer, right? In all this kind of stuff, I'm a lay, lay coming guys and on, on all this stuff. But one thing that I, I, I kind of know is, I don't, I would not say that they don't work until I spend some time uh, with it, right? Yeah, because that's, that's the mentality that we should have, or at least like startup founders should have is, hey, don't say that thing doesn't work, right? Because mm-hmm. people say the same thing to you, right? When you start your company as well, right? Maybe we should spend some time on that product, right? On that idea, right? Before we say something, right? Uh, uh, right now, most of the answer that I would say, oh, when people talk, share with me an idea, I, I, I mean, I would say that I don't know enough, right? Yeah, if you think it works, right? Then try it, right? Then build it out, right? But most of the time, I don't know enough to say that this works or doesn't work, right? Yeah, so... So uh, that was a hard moment, yeah. And and again, right? If I hold buy more like uh, Eve, right? At that time, right? I still don't have to work right now, right? So so I mean, there are so many like, oh shit, moment, right? <laughs> I I mean, but most of the time, I feel like oh, people will think that okay, oh, I missed this deep, right? Oh, I should have bought like a uh, Eve at uh, when it's like one thousand dollars, right? I think people feel bummed about a lot of things, right? Mm. But one, one question that I always ask my friends is, hey, why didn't you feel bummed that you didn't buy Bitcoin when it was launched, right? Why did you feel bummed when you missed the, 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 the deep, right? And then, oh, you missed this like meme coin opportunity and stuff like that, right? If, why, why don't you, if you want to regret, why don't you regret bigger, right? <laughs> because you, you, you missed the opportunity anyway. Why don't you 
regret that you miss Bitcoin, you miss like Ethereum, right? And even you miss like gold, right? But gold was like way before our time. So we didn't really miss it, right? But for Bitcoin and stuff, actually we were alive, right? We we're using internet back then. But how come you, you don't feel like you miss it? Right. Because I think again, it's all the perspective, right? And 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 a basic economics like a uh, lesson told us that okay, this is like a uh, uh, sunk cost, right? It's like by gone is by gone, mm. right? So well, I mean, on one hand, if it is something that we can learn and also improve, then of course this is a good experience. Otherwise, why do we spend so much time indulged with all these like losses, right? That that we had, right? Especially. It doesn't really matter that much, right? I think for Web3, one good thing is there are so many opportunities every single day. I was about to say that. Yeah. There's so many opportunities that you're going to miss a lot, but you're always going to have another shot, always. Yeah. Therefore, it's not, oh, I missed Ethereum or I missed Bitcoin at this price. It's, hey, like, you're going to have so many other opportunities. You just need to stick around. And in the context of crypto, not die, meaning not lose all your money at once, right? Yeah. But I, I feel like people love to complain absolutely they love I, to make themselves feel miserable i think yeah <laughs> actually i think there is a chemical aspect to that i read something like when you complain you get some dopamine shot or something <laughs> like it makes you feel better right uh, but again it's not going to change anything about <laughs> to your life to complain yeah that's for it's, sure it's almost this is one thing that my father told me because he's kind of like a i mean he didn't know the english word right because he's like a normal Hong Kong guy. Uh, he didn't even finish uh, primary school due to the, the Chinese like, cultural movement. And then he come to Hong Kong and stuff. He was a cook at a fast food restaurant, right? So we we come from, a, I mean, uh, my brothers and sisters and, and me, we, we all come, we come from a very humble background, right? Mm. And then my, but my father is a very unique person in a way that he always tried to be a contrarian in a lot of things, right? Because he feels like the things that most people do is kind of dumb. Uh, kind of dumb, right? Because when he was like uh, working at a fast food restaurant, a lot of his colleagues, right, they they go to like gambling and then go to like prostitutes, right, <laughs> during like holidays and stuff like that. But he did, he didn't like it, right? He he loved to become the the rare, mm. right, the, the 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 opposite guy, right. And then I I believe that kind of like shape how how I think about stuff, right. And on one hand, I don't I don't feel like a uh, loss is a loss uh, that much, right. I I try to see whether we can turn our misfortune into fortune, mm. right? That's number one. Number two is when when I started to, to start our company, right? And working on our products and projects, right? Then I start to feel like the norm is failure, right? Because success is almost like by definition, the, the, the minority, mm. right? Following that trend for things that most people do, probably that don't lead to success. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't have to eat, right? But I'm saying that most thing, most decision, most action that people do every single day, that probably lead to a very common, ordinary lives that doesn't really create an impact to the world, right? Again, I'm not saying that living an ordinary life is bad, right? I'm mm -hmm. just saying that if you want to be special, right, you can, you have to act special. Mm -hmm. You have to do something that ordinary people do not do. I think being a startup founder, say, uh, usually you have that contrarian mindset. Right? And somehow, uh, uh, why I don't like to complain, because complain doesn't create much value. Mm -hmm. right? And if you can fix it, fix it. If you can't fix it, why do you fixate it on it? Right? So I think that's, that's one of the things that I don't like Web3, because it gives a platform for so many people to to complain, mm. right? And, and most people, they don't take their responsibility, right? I mean, if if you try to mean a rug pool project, right? Uh, with all the wet, wet, uh, wet flags and stuff, it's, it's on you, right? And if you buy and sell a token, right? At different price point, it's on you, right? Because uh, assuming that that project didn't really say, say a lie or like do, do some shady stuff, right? But then it's on you, right? And why do you always blame other people for your own decision? Right. I think that's something that uh, I don't like, right? But again, I think I can't control other people, right? I can only do better for myself, right? I can only uh, kind of like teach my kids, right? Uh, uh, to, to have a correct mentality towards uh, things in life, right? Because when we complain, it's almost like we give away the power right, to change things, right? And that means that we, uh, we make ourselves powerless, right? Meanwhile, if you don't complain and try to fix it, and then or move on, 
you 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 feel powerful because mm. you feel that okay you overcome the challenges yeah absolutely so it's sort of a mindset of uh, i'm responsible for everything that happens to me the yes. good and the bad yes and then even if it's not really true at least you feel that you have the power and the control for things and uh is much more helpful, definitely. Yeah, there's an old saying, right? I mean, you can't change the weather, right? But you can change your uh, emotion towards yeah. the weather. Yeah. I think that's very true, yeah. So you had this crypto aha moment and at some, t- at some point you get into the next dimension, which is our business needs mm. to go yeah. all into crypto, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say all in, right? Because at the beginning, right, we always try to be safe. Even mm-hmm. when we started our first company, I still had my day job, right, for like three to four years, right? So I'm always kind of like a saver guy, right? And uh, that's why we dip toes, uh, dip our toes into crypto, right? Oh, we, we move some of the company asset, right, to, to digital asset, mm-hmm. right? And then we also, uh, I started to buy more NFT to learn because I'm a big believer in, you actually learn by doing, right? You can't learn by, I mean, no offense, but listening to podcasts, you can't learn that much. Absolutely. Right? It's almost like, okay, listening to smart podcasts, smart people talk about stuff, it gives you more confidence, yeah. right? But in order to learn, you still have to do your work, right? You still have to create your own wallet. You still have to buy NFT, buy crypto to learn more, right? I'm yeah. a big believer in that. You have to right? get wrecked <laughs> yes. a couple of yeah, times. I, I mean, I, I'm a fair positive guy. That's why I say that pay to learn. <laughs> P-A-Y, pay. Yeah. You pay to learn. A lot of people play to earn, right? P-L-A-Y, right? and then E-A-R-N. For me, it's like P-A-Y and then L-E-A-R-N, right? You yeah. When you spend real money, your personal money on it, not real money, personal money into it, uh, you actually feel the pain. Yeah. By feeling the pain, that's how you grow because you won't make another stupid decision yeah. again, right? Assuming that you're smart, right? So so I think in like two years ago, I started, I, I bought like 2,000 ETH, 3,000 ETH worth of NFTs, right? At the time when ETH was like $4,000, right? So so I, I pay a lot of like lessons fee, right? To learn how <laughs> NFT and Web3 works, right? <laughs> and that's also one of the reasons why, why I can learn so fast, right? When you are... <laughs> Have, have pay a very expensive like tuition fee, you actually have to learn really, really fast. Otherwise <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. yeah. That's an expensive lesson, but actually the, the most expensive lessons are the best, right? The ones you remember and the- uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say the best. I would say that expensive lessons uh, make you remember. Yeah. Right? It may not be the best. Yeah, it's like, it's like girlfriends, right? It, you, yeah, it, you spend so much money on this girlfriend, doesn't mean that that's the best girlfriend, right? But probably they, that, that makes you remember her, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, same thing go to guys, right? I'm not saying that, okay, uh, guys only pay for, pay, for, pay for girlfriends and stuff, right? But, but, but I, we live in a very, uh, I would say, uh, equal world in a way, yeah. But what I mean is uh, when you have skin in the game, it makes you learn much faster. Yeah. Right? Because no matter how many blogs, how many tweets that you read, you're only a bystander, right? right? You are only an audience, right? But when you get your step into the arena, you actually learn to fight, right? You, I mean, maybe you die, right? But but somehow you learn to fight, you get better every single day, right? That's what I see uh, for most of the guys uh, that I talk to, right? I mean, as, as you mentioned before, as long as we survive, as long as we don't die, as long as we don't get drained 100% of our personal wealth, yep. there's still always a, there's always a chance that we can come back. Yeah, and that's that's a positive message uh, in, in like startup in crypto as well, yeah. You're building meme land. Yeah. What is meme land if you had to explain it to your mother? I would say that uh, this is this is, uh, a community, right? Uh, we, we call it the community company, right? If I have to tell, tell my mom, uh, I would say, oh, this is a community company where people can have fun and make money together, right? I mean, of course, like not, not financial advice, right? But that's the goal, right? How can we build something great together, right? In the past one, I get, we are already a very community heavy company, right? Because most, all the content, right, is, is from our users, mm-hmm. right? So we kind of understand how community works. But with Web3, you actually have like incentives, right? As like an incentive, right? Where you can mobilize a lot of people to do things together. Right? I think that's very, very powerful, right? So I would tell my mom that, okay, we're building a community company, right? Where a lot of people can work together, right? To achieve goals together, right? Be it like financial goals, be it like, I don't know, just meet up uh, in with others in real life and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think, uh, that's that's what we are doing with Mimland, right? And and talking about that, uh, it's also very interesting, right? Because I believe that there are like two 
AIs that are fearful in point right now. Number one, of course, is like artificial intelligence, where people talk about every single day, right? These days, right? Yeah, even like Apple, right? They integrate with ChatGPT, yep. right? Doing yep. WWDC, right? And then uh, they just make the announcement, right? And then for 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 us, right? Especially in Web three. I think align the interest, align the incentive, right? That's another important AI that people have to understand, right? Because a uh, artificial intelligence, most of the time, we are only the user and only the data provider, right? Because we are the data that get trained, right, in the in the system, right, by open AI, by all these like big AI companies. Small individuals, they actually don't have that much, I would say, uh, opportunity to build something out of AI. Maybe you can build an application, right? But that's not really, really that big, right? Yeah, meanwhile, for Alliance, for crypto, for Web3, even the small guys, if you work hard, if you mm. grind, right? Actually, there's a better chance for you to, to make a better financial return, right? And and that's that's the Alliance incentive, right? It's, it's how to differentiate Web2 and Web3. For Web2, okay, you're only a user, right? For Web3, you actually can be part of the, the team, part of the, the project, right? And because the team may, may be the token, right? Maybe the NFT, maybe other incentive, right? Actually, you have the same goal, right? To make it good. Mm. Right? And I think that's that's really, really important, yeah, for, for a lot of people, yeah. What's your ultimate holy grail vision with Meme Land? I mean, that's a good question. I actually haven't thought about that because I don't think there's an end. I, I, I would love to... Uh, 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 become the company, uh, make meme land, right? Become the company that brings Web3 to the people. Mm. Yeah. Because, because we, because with Nightgat, we kind of bring meme, brought meme to the mainstream media. Uh, because before Nightgat, I mean, there are, uh, there are, I mean, memes have been around for a long time, right? But most of the time, they focus, they, they only survive, uh, they only get service in uh, all these like forums, like like Reddit, like 4chan, uh, like all these like online forums, right? As a very insider stuff, right? Because they actually don't get shared that much outside of their own forum, yeah. For for, for Nightgat, we kind of, uh, kind of like bridge it to, to like Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram, to all these like social media platform, right? Because we believe that, hey, we don't get people to go to your platform, right? We go, we bring our content. Right? We don't get people to see your content right? and come to your platform. We bring our content to the people where they mm, are, mm. right? I hope that for Meme Land, we can also do that, right? Because Web3 until today is still very, very hard, right? For for normies, right? To, to understand what it is uh, and how it works, right? And why it's important, right? We would love Meme Land to become the company that, makes it simple enough for people to believe that, okay, this is actually interesting, right? So that they can try, right? That's why we call our token meme coin. And then uh, we do some uh, very silly things, right? Actually on, on, on June live, uh, we actually launched the first like international meme day, right? Because mm. we believe that, hey, if we can have April Fool's uh, day, why can't we have a meme day? A meme has been so important, right, in, in humans' life uh, today. Right, all the kids they probably know like a uh, uh, meme day, right, than any other special days are uh, in a year. Why can't we have an international meme day, right? And then why can't meme land, right? Why can't us uh, we become the first one to launch it? Right? That's why we had um, uh, a gathering at McDonald's right? uh, across like ten cities in the world, and then doing nothing, right? Just go there and then uh, take a photo and stuff like that, right? And then try to kickstart the, the tradition. Yeah, and. And, and by doing stuff like this, that's how we can bring Web3, bring crypto, uh, uh, bring uh, blockchain to the people. Mm. Yeah, I think I think this is a very important uh, mindset that we are not onboarding people with Web3. We should be bringing peop- uh, Web3 to the people. Onboarding means, okay, you have to learn so much mm. to get into Web3, right? Onboarding, right? It's like, oh, you onboard a ship, you onboard uh, a plane, right? But I believe that for for tech, uh, for tech to have mass adoption, you actually have to make it work for the people. Right? It's not like oh you're stupid. That's why you un- you don't understand C phrase. Uh, you don't understand how to use a ledger or Tresa, right? But why why do I need to remember understand what C phrase is? You know to 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 buy crypto. I think stuff like this, right? Those are the things that we want Mimland to be part of uh, to to contribute. Yeah. There is another project that is working really hard on bringing Web3 to the people. We have two penguins on the table, right? And I know that 
you guys partnered with Pudgy Penguins to throw an event at uh, NFT Paris. What do you think of what Luca Nets is building with Pudgy Penguins? Yeah, I mean, Luca is one of the, the, the founders that, that gets it, right? That, that understand right? uh, how to build community, right? And also how to build a business, right? With the community, right? And I think that's very, very important. I, I think, I mean, I met, I, I'm fortunate, right? I met Lucas a few times. I talked to him a few times, right? And then uh, I, I can call him a friend. I don't know whether he see me as a friend, but <laughs> but but because probably he doesn't want to have an old friend. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> for me, I, I feel like, okay, he's really passionate about his community, right? as, about Pachi Penguins, right? So, so I believe that uh, the approach that they have, right, is building on the unfair advantage that Luca has, right? I mean, when I say unfair advantage, means that, what are the advantages that you have, but other people don't have, right? And yeah. with his like e-commerce background, right? Yeah. I think uh, getting uh, Pudgy, right, into the quote unquote real world, right, offline world, is actually building with his like experience with uh, the, his like uh, the, 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 the the toy gun, I forgot the name, blaster or something. No, not blaster. Yeah, but but the toy gun where to shoot gel the blaster. gel, the gel blaster. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And I think that is like I wouldn't say the same playbook, but I would say that is at least like uh, he can apply his past experience right into the new project. Right, I mean new as in uh, for for Pachi, Right. Yeah. So so I believe. That's, that's, that's how I think that, okay, this actually makes a lot of sense to me, right? I mean, and not every project can do that. Not every founder can do it, right? I mean, our holders, our companies always say, hey, Ray, why don't you make some potatoes toys? Or why don't you make some like meme land toys, right? I was like, but, but why, right? Mm -hmm. what, what is our advantage on that, right? And, and of course we can, we can always uh, try to make some toys and stuff, but why would people care? Right, and this is not even our focus, right? Why do we have to do that, right? And and I think uh, for 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 Pachi Penguins, right? I think I think Luca has found his own way, yeah. And and again, there are many ways to make it work. And for Pachi, right, going retail, right, uh, making toys, making collectibles, right, that makes a lot of sense for them, yeah. Do you hold a Pachi? NFT. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I have, a, I have a few. I plan to buy more. Right? I think because this is. Again, this is what I believe in, right? In crypto, the easiest way, right, to, to I mean, it's like crypto is amazing. Well, no, not crypto, but NFT is amazing that if you spend some money, right, to buy an NFT, you can instantly get into a community. Right? You, can, you can almost instantly talk to the founders, right? And what's the last time you buy a product on Amazon and Jeff Bezos talk to you, mm. right? Or maybe like a Microsoft or, or like a Apple, right? What's the last time that you have, not even the founder, maybe only like a, a part of the leadership team, right? To talk to you, right? But meanwhile, for NFT, you actually talk to the CEO, right? Talk to the founders, right? If you want, you can ping him all the time, right? And they, they actually respond to you. I think that's the fast track, right? To learn, right? That's the fast track to, to build relationship, right? And I think that's, that's why why I, I believe in that. That's why I bought a lot of NFTs. Of course, a lot of them die, right? But for Pudgy, right? I mean, we, I, I think personally, I think I have two or three. Right? I, 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 because for NFT, I really, I barely sell, mm. right? That's why I buy something that I like, right? So I, I buy the two ones with bow tie. I like the bow tie ones, right? I think they look very, very cute, yeah. So 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 that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I have right now, right? But at the end of the day, I, I think um, only by having... I mean, only by being part of the community, uh, you start to learn more about what they're doing. Yeah? Because most of the time, if you just look at uh, uh, projects like Twitter, yeah, you feel like everyone is changing the world. Mm -hmm. right? But you go to a Discord right, to search uh, how, what was the last time the founder was actually talking in the Discord? That's a very important signal to see that whether that project has died already. Right? So, so I think uh, for Pudgy, right? I mean, long story short, I have Pudgy right? and bullish on Pudgy. Yeah. So Pudgy is... Uh Likely to not be the expensive uh, girlfriend, expensive girlfriend. I don't NFT know. I mean, it's very expensive, right? From 2000. Uh, yeah, but the one that costs you uh, the expensive lesson, girlfriend from I mean, 2021. <laughs> no, it's, it's like a group, right? So, so, so for for like 2000 e 3000 is is a lot of NFTs, right? Yeah. But I mean, again, by gone is by gone, right? There's like, there's like. Money you spent already, right? But but again, for me, uh, these days I I started to because I wouldn't say I learned a lot about NFT, but I kind of understand the importance of it, right? That's why right now I only buy NFT that I really like, mm. or I 
only buy NFT to support the partners that we are working with, right? Because we want to put our money where our mouth is, right? So if we work with a project, right, we want to support them, right, and buy their NFT, maybe buy their the the ordinals and stuff like that, right? Because hey, if we are promoting that project with our uh, f- to our communities, right, at least we have to tell them, hey, why I believe in it, why we 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 believe that this is an interesting project for our community as well. Yeah, so we buy a lot of NFTs uh, for me personally, uh, and also for for our for Meme as a company. Yeah, and I also started to to buy arts that I like, uh, dig- uh, NFT arts that I like. Yeah, and um, and I think uh, because again, mm-hmm. if I don't sell, I should buy something that I really really like. Yeah, I had uh, Raul Pa on the podcast last week, yep. and he's doing the same. He's buying high end NFT arts. I mean, high end, no end. You, sometimes you don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean. What he thinks is going to be high end, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. But yeah. people always have an opinion to work yeah. like different stuff, right? Yeah. Every time people buy NFT, they always believe that okay, this is the holy grail of NFT. Yeah. This is the next crypto punk, right? But there's only one crypto punk, right? Even Bored Ape is not crypto punk, right? Mm. So, so I would say that uh, just buy stuff that you like. I mean, if you're really, really good at trading, right? Then maybe you can use trade NFTs for for living, right? But again, for NFT. I think the key part is not about the trading, right? I mean, the financial part is what makes it more, I would say, liquid, right? But mm. that should not be the main goal, right? I I always believe that, uh, I mean, for, for me, man, we don't have um a roadmap, right? But we have a three-step action plan or thesis, right? Depending on how you call it, right? I believe that uh, NFT is great for building communities, right? And uh, token is great for distributing their value. And product is good for kind of like uh, 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 talk, um, kind of like reaching the, the the users, right? So we 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 check the box with NFT, we have free NFT collections, right? And we build a pretty good community, right? And then uh, for for token, right? We we help launch a token, and then a lot of our holders, right? They get rich because of meme coin, right? And uh, and meme coin is just starting, right? And then oh, we also have for product like Stickland, like other projects that we are working on, right? That's how we can get more uh, meme land and meme coin to more people right so so uh for for nft i it's it's just a tech it's a format right mm-hmm. if you want to support the team want to support the creator right you buy it you hold it right if you want to sell you sell right just like artwork right you can be the biggest like uh art like a uh, patron right but sometimes you still sell the art right it doesn't mean that you don't like it right but uh if you really really like it yeah you properly don't trade it every single day mm. right yeah so that's uh that's how i see nft especially for art nft yeah you talked about partners one yep. of your partners and investors is called tangent Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah, Jason. Who was built by yep. Jason and Daryl Wong. Yep. I had both of them on the podcast. Actually, Daryl is uh, is trading the Pudgy Penguins. Yep. Um, why are you working with the Tangent team? I mean, I listen to uh, Jason's I podca- uh, podcast. I also follow him. I, um, he's one of the few, like, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say smart guys because I love guys in crypto are very smart, right? He's one of the uh, honest right, and like objective guys. Right? He say, I mean, he say what he thinks. Right? Mm. He doesn't say stuff to shield projects. Mm. Right? And I think for me as a founder, I want, I want objective right? uh, advisor, investors like that right? because it's important for us to listen to like honest opinion. Right? Because when when you have when you talk to your community, right, they're always either very bullish or very bearish, right? But they don't give you a lot of like useful information every single day. Meanwhile, for for investors, right, because they have skin in the game, but somehow you also want to talk to someone who are more experienced and you who have like different views, right, uh, from you. Right? I think Jason and 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 Daryl, I think I think they are they are they are kind they are like that, yeah, mm. yeah. And that's why Tension is our investor at MemeCoin right? uh, before we launch, right, and also I I, I mean he's kind of like. Like our, I mean, I would see him as an advisor, right? Although we don't have any like official relationship, but I talk to him about ideas, right? We brainstorm uh, together sometimes. I think that's that's why, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan and, and lucky to call him investors right now. Right? And then also I told him that, hey, 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 Jason, right? And then if you have any good projects, right, that you want us to invest in, let us know as well, right? Mm-hmm. So we can be called investor, yeah. What's a project or a team that you particularly love in crypto and why? I, I would say, I wouldn't say love, right? Love is a very heavy work, right? But because I'm, I'm Asian, right? I treasure the love work more, 
more, right? But but I would say that I respect a lot of the teams, right? And a lot of them, I, I learn from a lot of them, right? Because again, I'm pretty late to, to crypto, to Web3, right? That's why a lot of the, the projects, they have been around for some time. And then uh, it's kind of like they're there in Japanese term, like sensei, right? Mm. Like sensei, right? Like Pudgy Penguins, like Yuga Labs, like uh, Azuki, right? Like um, like even like um, uh, a lot of like newer projects, right? relatively newer, right? Like D-Gods, right? I think basically projects that don't, that haven't died, right? And then the founders are still kind of like working hard, still grinding, right? I mean, they all have something that we can learn from. Yeah, maybe different like a uh, mechanism in how they run their community, right? Maybe the marketing strategy, maybe the social media tactics, right? I think all these things that we can learn from them, right? And of course, uh, uh, from time to time, there are also new projects that are very, very interesting, right? Maybe they are newer than us, but they actually have like interesting mechanism, right? Then we also uh, learn from them as well, right? Because for us, uh, we call ourselves meme land, right? The good thing is, we don't even have a very solid direction because anything can be meme, right? And any mechanism that people do, we, we can also learn from them, right? Because for us, it's, it's more about the community part, right? It's not about the product, it's not about the feature. Yeah, so those are the things that uh, I like, right? And, I, and I'm lucky, right, to be in a position that, hey, when we reach out to a team, we, all, we almost always can talk to the founders. Right. Yeah. Because uh, either they re- they know that we are from Web three, they know us from Web three meme land and stuff. Right. They they don't want to talk to us about partnership and stuff. Or oh, they knew us uh, in Web two uh, because of Nike. Oh, they used Nike before. Mm. Right. So so those are the things that help us open more doors so that we can learn faster. Because it's almost like you can learn by reading books, but you can learn faster mm. right by when you talk to the offer. Right. It's kind of like that in crypto. Yeah. If you could meet. To 18 years old Ray today, what would we tell him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was like 22 years ago. Yeah, I'm like 40 this year. Yeah. Actually, no, I, I mean, just to do your best. Yeah, I think, I actually don't think about this kind of like imaginary question that much because I feel like the young Ray probably didn't give a fuck about the old Ray. Yeah, because I didn't even give a <laughs> fuck about what my father said, right? Why would I care about uh future ray uh, and and i was think that hey you didn't do a very good job yeah yeah and then uh, <laughs> yeah so so i probably won't listen to to him yeah but again i would say that uh i'm very lucky in a way that i don't have that many regrets in life I, of course uh my, my my first son i think i i would say that maybe there are some regrets uh, but there's not much that i can do right, at the time because human beings is really hard to fight disease anyway yeah and then um but I would say that uh, even some misfortune, right? I would say that it's like, a, I can kind of like turn it into a fortune, right? Not really money kind of fortune, but more mm, like a, yeah. a good event, right? So that I can learn from, it's a learning, it's an experience. And and that's that's why that's why I always feel like, you know, just do our best, right? And then if it didn't work at the time, maybe, maybe there's a reason for that. Right. What can we learn from it? Right. For example, I didn't study well at university. I studied really, really, I studied kind of well in high school. Right. And then um, I didn't study well in, in university. Right. But it's not the end of the world. Right. When I look at my, uh, my, my, my classmates, right, I believe that I have, uh, I have a happier life than most of them. Mm. Right. Not most, right? some of them. I think a lot of them, they're also very happy. Right. Yeah. And then, okay. Oh, for what I get, right? we didn't become like the, the best uh, platform, right? Because at the time, I still remember in 2012, I, uh, at one point, I think we actually have more users than Reddit, right? Right now, Reddit is like a giant, right? In the social media space, right? After like 10, 20 years right, of, of surviving, right? And then, and then they, they just got listed on, 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 on the exchange and stuff like that. And then they are one of the driving forces in a lot of like topics in the world these days, right? So we, could, we couldn't be Reddit, right? But... I mean, we still we still have Nike, right? We still treasure what we have. Okay. Oh, we I, I didn't buy Bitcoin early, right? I didn't buy ETH early, right? But it doesn't really matter, right? Because, oh, we, we still have like uh, meme coin, right? I still have a chance to learn so much about different projects, different founders, right? I got into Web3, right? And I'm, I believe that I'm earlier than like 95% of people on, on Earth, right? Mm. So I still find myself uh, very blessed, right? And, and I think because of that, I don't really think about the, uh, Oh, what if, what if, right? I, mm. I don't think about that, right? I'm not Marvel, right? I don't have to create another series called What If, right? But <laughs> but but for me, yeah, I, I would say that I appreciate all this experience because that's how 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 the current me 
was uh, uh, is, is shaped, right? Or continue to be shaped, yeah. What's your biggest prediction for the next 12 months? In, in, what, in what, what area? Whatever you want. I don't, I don't really predict the future, right? That's a quote, right? I mean, I, I make the future. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's a quote. <laughs> yeah, I, I think most. I, I mean, even when you look at all these like experts, right, predicting the market, I don't think they can predict shit. Right? Yeah, I think you learn from them. You understand their hypothesis. You understand their reasoning, but most of the time, it's not right. Right? I think either the timing is not right, either the price is not right, or the reason is not right. Right? But th that's that's the interesting thing, right? Because. You actually, even the expert can be wrong. That means that the new guy can still have a mm. chance to win, right? I think that's that's a that's a fun thing about life, right? I think only thing that we can really predict is we will all die, right? And and other things we actually don't know, right? Maybe oh we, we, we oh uh, we plan our schedule oh for the next trip and stuff oh maybe that events get cancelled, right? We can't even plan that. Right? Why do we have to plan so much right? or predict so much? Right? I would say that there are some trends that is quite obvious, right? That, hey, if you are riding on that wave, then probably it's good enough, right? For example, I, I believe that, right? But this is not prediction, but it's almost like it's too obvious that I believe that, okay, Web3 will get more and more uh, adopted, right? In, in real world, right? On one hand, even the government is pushing Web3 in Hong Kong, right? And not to mention, okay, Bitcoin, ETH, ETF, and stuff like that, right? I think you can almost say that uh, the, 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 the cryptocurrency right, is already part of like legitimized, right? By the, by the, by the general public, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, it raises another question is, okay, even it wasn't like crypto, where it started as a, as a, as a, as a, as a fight against authority, against the government, right? Uh, we talk about decentralization, but how come the, the main reason for Bitcoin to pump Right. It's because it gets an ETF, right? Why, right, right? But that, that's that's the question that I don't know how to answer. Right? But for me, I, I I believe that this is less uh, about the financial uh, part, but more about the tech part, right? I still believe that uh, without this kind of new tech, it's really hard to push the 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 current like stakeholders to change, right? It's almost like, hey, if there's only there's no like online, right? Then Walmart will never change, right? They don't need to change, mm. right? But because of Amazon, right? They have to change, right? I think because of crypto, all these banks, they have to change, right? And that's how uh, human beings uh, live a better life, right? Because of all this like, new disruption, right? And that's why I, I, I try my best, I do my best to always embrace uh, changes because changes is the is only thing that doesn't change, right? So, so I would say uh, that's something that will happen, definitely, right? I'm bullish. Right. Not because of the, oh, whether Bitcoin, Bitcoin can, can reach like uh, 1.5 million, like in the next 10 years, blah, blah, blah. I'm not Kathy Wood, right? I don't have to predict that, right? But uh, I, I believe that uh, um, more and more people will get into Web3 one way or another, yeah. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for being such an open person. Thank you for this amazing conversation. And thank you for making my life and the life of another 200 million people a little more wholesome every day with nine gags and your memes. Thank you. Thank you.